Hello, welcome to day five. We're done after today. You're gonna have a gorgeous bag to use. I'm so excited. So for now, you should have a bag that looks like this. Today, we're going to be making the strap and the handles and attaching it. So you will actually be able to carry your bag. It will start to function as a real bag. Um, so in the pattern, we're gonna be kind of jumping backwards to step one. Um, the parts that we didn't do yet. So um, that would be uh, E, F, and then step two, making the handles. So um, for the long strap in the pattern, it talks about sewing the two short ends together, but you'll remember when we did our cutting, we only cut one long piece, so you don't need to do that. So it's step one, part E and F, and then step two, then we're going to be jumping all the way to the end of the pattern to steps 9 and 10 to attach um, the crossbody strap to your hardware and then sewing your handles onto your bag. So the first step that you're going to want to do is the same for both the strap and the two handle pieces and that is to mark a line down the center of the wrong side of your strap and your two handles. Um, we're going to be following the same process that we did with the um, strap holders where we kind of folded it in half and then folded the two halves together with these and top stitching. Um, so the line, just where these are longer, the line is really helpful so that you can actually see where the, the halfway point is so that everything is nice and even. Um, the other thing we're going to do, which is optional but I recommend it, um, we're going to be leaving the edges, the very like end edges of our hand handles and our strap raw. So sometimes the backing on these can fray. I actually, this one doesn't seem like it's fraying at all, which is awesome. Um, so it depends on which of the faux leathers you had. I used the cognac leather on my um, cypress floral bag that I made and the backing did fray a little bit on that. So, um, to keep it from fraying or to help keep it from fraying, I'm actually going to take a lighter and just kind of burn the edges of this a little bit. Don't light your house on fire. Don't burn your house down. Please be safe if you're using fire to do this. You don't want to hold it on the, um, the leather for too long and melt it. But basically I'm just taking my lighter and I'm just going to run it back and forth really quickly along the short edge and that will just kind of melt. The backing down so that it won't fray. It's kind of hard to even see what I've done but I'm going to do that on all of my short edges on both handles and my long strap. Okay so here's my one handle done. If you hold it in one place for too long it will light on fire so be careful blow it out if it lights on fire. Don't burn your house down please. Um, so you're going to do that for all three pieces. Then we're going to start folding in half um, and clipping and then we'll be top stitching. So what I'm going to do is I'll show you how to do this on one of the short handles for the, the folding, the clipping, and the top stitching and then I'll leave you to do the other handle and the long strap yourself. The long strap is long, um, it's a lot of top stitching but um, it's just one straight, two straight lines so it's not, it's not too hard. Um, and then we'll come back and we'll talk about how to put your hardware on your long strap. So you'll need your slider and your two swivel clips. And then we will sew our handles onto our bag. All right. All right, so I've got my um, handle here with my line drawn down the middle. I've got a pile of clips to work with. And I'm gonna do basically the same thing that I did with my strap holder. So I'm gonna fold, um, each of the long sides in to meet the line that I drew and clip them along. And just making sure to keep it nice and even with the line so that everything is straight. Okay, and then I'm gonna flip it over here and do the same thing to the other side. When I get here, I'm just going to offset my clips a little bit so they're not exactly even. And that's just so when I fold this in half again, I can easily just clip it all the way down. Okay, 
right, so once you have both sides flipped in, it will look like this, which you might remember from our strap holders. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to fold this in half again so that now your folded edges meet and you've got your raw edges here at the top. And I am just going to adjust here at the top to make sure everything is nice and straight because, uh, like I said, we are leaving this um, edge here raw. So you'll want it to be um, as accurate as possible just so that it looks um, like a nice kind of professional finished handle on your bag. Okay, so just keep folding, move your clips so that it's over all four layers. And then again, once I get to this other end, I'm just going to make sure that everything is lined up nice and straight. Okay, so you can measure this on your table. Your um, strap should now be three quarters of an inch wide. And then what we're going to do is we're going to top stitch down both of the long sides. Um, you do not need to top stitch across this edge. We will end up sewing this edge once we actually attach it to the bag. Okay, so uh, let's go over here to the sewing machine. I've got my top stitch length set to a three, and then um, I am going to back stitch this time. So um, just take one or two back stitches at the very end. And I'm top stitching at an eighth of an inch and I'm starting with um, the side where I'm, I've got my clips, so where I'm trying to hold it together. And then I'll do the other side after that. So just a couple back stitches. And then again, my machine kind of struggles to get this going. I'm just gonna grab my threads in the back so I can gently encourage it forward. Mine is quite stuck. Let's see here. There we go. Now we're moving. Okay, so just nice and slow when you're top stitching so that you're accurate. Remove your clips as you go. Okay, and this is a lot of layers, so same as our strap holders, it's four layers, so it is quite thick. Um, but my machine is handling it pretty well so far, so again, you can always hand crank. Um, you can always add a little bit of extra pressure to your pressure presser foot with your finger if your machine is struggling. Um, another thing you can do if your machine's struggling with the layers is try a bigger needle. So sometimes a jeans needle um, I've had to use on different bags I've made so that my uh, thread catches. Um, so those are all different things that you can try. see I've got my one row of top stitching done along this end. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to sew my other line of top stitching on the folded side. So on the opposite edge, again, just an, an eighth of an inch top stitching. I'm only doing um, one row on each side of top stitching, not double on the handles. Um, and that's because when we sew this onto our bag, we're going to be sewing a box around here. And so when there's a lot of layers of top stitching, it can just make that look a little bit more messy. Um, and then I'm going to be doing exactly the same thing with my other handle and with my long crossbody strap. Okay, so I'll leave you to do that. I'm going to do mine and then I will meet you back here and we'll talk about getting the hardware onto our strap and getting the handles on our bag. All right, so we have to get our handle, or yeah, our handle onto our bag. Um, and so we're going to be sewing it through all of the bag layers. So we're going to be sewing through our um, exterior and our lining and our leather to attach this handle to the bag, so one on each side. 
So you'll want to look in your pattern for placement instructions. Um, basically, you're going to be lining up the um, edge of your handle with where this uh, seam is, so it will just kind of butt right up against the edge. And you're going to want to measure um, one and three quarter inches down from this finished edge, uh, so where the seam is, not the zipper. You're going to need your zipper open. Um, to get your um, handle on here, we can't pin because it's leather. Um, I'm probably just going to attach a couple clips here at the top to hold it until I get over to my sewing machine. You could also put a strip of double-sided tape, just a little piece on the back to um, hold this on if you wanted to. That would work as well. So I'm going to take my ruler and measure my distance down, line up my edges, and then what I'm going to do is just hold this in place and put a clip here on either side. Um, one other thing you could do if you wanted to is you could use like a friction pen or a, a marker that you can um, either wash off or iron off and put a little line right at the bottom of the handle so that you know um, where it needs to go. Then you really want to make sure when you're putting the other side on that your handle is not twisted. Okay, so if I had this flipped this way, I would end up with a handle that's twisted. So I've got my... Um, folded edge here against the outside seam. So I'm going to make sure I've got my folded edge here against the outside seam. Measure down with my ruler. Line that up. And then again, I'm just going to put oops, a couple of clips here to hold that in place. Okay, so then if I'm looking at it, I can see, okay, my handle is, is straight, it's not twisted at all. So now the fun part is trying to maneuver this through the sewing machine to sew a box around it. So um, we're going to um, sew our box and then we're gonna sew an X through our box. So I'm gonna take off uh, on my sewing machine this part so I have a little bit more room to work with. Um, I'm basically going to just be kind of eyeballing where my box is, but you do want it to be even. Um, you want your boxes to be in the same place on both handles. So just kind of keep track of where you start, where you stop, and then try to, to mimic that on this side. If your thread's matching your leather, probably nobody would ever notice, but just something to keep in mind. So, um... Again, my zipper is open because I do not want to sew my handle through both layers and then not be able to open my bag. So you're going to want to keep the other half of your bag out of the way. Um, bring this over to your machine. I took the clip off of one side of my handle. Now it's um, still on the other. Okay, and basically what I'm going to do for the sides of my boxes is line my stitching up with my top stitch lines. Let me just adjust here so that you can actually see. Okay, so um, I just keep maneuvering it until I can see it's lined up and I usually just put my needle down into the down position so I know, okay, now I'm lined up. I'm gonna pull this other clip off so that it doesn't get in my way. And then I'm gonna start sewing. So um, I do want to back stitch here and I'm going to keep my stitch length at a three to match my other stop top stitching. Okay, so I did a couple back stitches and now I'm just going to sew down this line. And I'm going to want to stop when I get to about a quarter or an eighth of an inch from the bottom. And then it gets a little bit tricky. You have to kind of keep that moving that bottom layer out of the way so it doesn't get stuck. I'm just going to hand crank until I get to where I want to be. So that's pretty good, I think. I'll just rotate. So then I've got my needle in the down position. I'm going to lift up my foot and rotate my bag. Okay, so this is again where you're kind of needing to shove your bag into your machine a little bit. Again, double checking that your lining is out of the, your other side of your bag is out of the way. You don't want to sew it closed. 
Okay, and then we're gonna sew across the bottom, stopping when we get to the next line of top stitching. If you wanted to here where it's a short distance, you could hand crank the whole way. That will give you the most precision. I'm gonna do a couple stitches on the machine, and then when I can see I've met the line, I'm putting my needle down again, and we're rotating the bag again. So needle down, foot up. You're gonna feed your bag through your machine. Just keep pushing it through. Just be careful that you don't get your leather stuck on anything on your machine. I managed to scratch my strap, uh, strap connector on my first bag that I made um, by catching it on my machine. So just be a little careful that you don't, uh, if it feels like it's stuck, don't just yank it through. I've got way too much stuff on the back here. Here's some room. All right, so then we're rotating. So now we should be going this way. So your foot goes down again. Make sure you've got everything all lined up. Your other half of your bag is out of the way back here. And then we're gonna stitch up towards the top. Okay, and then again, I'm gonna put my needle down and rotate my bag. This last rotation is a little bit easier because the bag is coming out. I'm just trying to knock my camera over. So let me just move. Okay, so here you want to be careful that you kind of wrap the back, the other um, half of your bag down around your sewing machine. So I've got it kind of down under here. And let me just adjust a little bit here again. Okay, so then I'm going to sew across the top. Um, I'm actually going to just take my snips that fell on the floor and just clip this thread here on the top so that I don't get it tangled in this row of stitches. So press your foot down and then, then just sewing across the top. And here, so I'm gonna back stitch here and pull my handle out. Okay, so you could rotate um, and do one of your diagonal lines here um, if you wanted to, I like just making sure that I'm nice and precise with my diagonal line, so I'm just going to pull it out. Okay, so then again, we're going to put it back in to do our X through our box. Our, it's a rectangle, so it'll be kind of a long, narrow X. But you want your um, your strap in just kind of a couple stitches from where the corner is. We're going to back stitch to meet that corner. Okay, so once you get to the corner, I'm going to hand crank a little bit just so I can see for sure what I'm doing. Yeah. Okay, then I'm going to start sewing. I'm just eyeballing it. If you had a removable pen, um, it's you don't want to put too much heat on the leather to kind of iron off those pens but I have done it before and it, it worked okay um, just be careful when you're ironing it off but you could draw a line um, lines for your X if you're nervous about um, being able to kind of eyeball it I'm just gonna kind of go for it hope for the best so I'm sewing my X down to the next corner back stitching all my threads nice and close so that it doesn't look too messy okay so this is what we're looking like so far I've got my box with the one diagonal line now I'm going to sew the next diagonal line so again keeping my other side of my bag well back and out of the way line up my corner here do a couple back stitches to get into that corner and then sew straight down diagonally to the next and then a couple back stitches as well okay so my x is not perfectly centered um, again drawing a box would probably help with that where my thread is such a close match for my handle i don't think it's going to be that noticeable um, even if I was selling this bag, which I may end up selling this bag, uh, this particular bag, I, would, I wouldn't I would fix it. So I think it's, it's fine. Um, so that's what my X looks like now. 
Um, so you're going to do exactly the same thing here on the other side. So your box and your X, then you're going to do exactly the same thing with your second handle on the back of the bag. So if you want me to keep kind of talking you through the steps, just keep rewinding the video a little bit, play it forward, rewind the video, play it forward, rewind the video, play it forward, and then we'll have all four of our boxes sewn and our bag will have handles. Yay. All right. We have a bag with handles. The very last thing we need to do is make our crossbody strap to clip on here. Um, so you should now have your strap top stitched. So it should look like this. And now we just have to sew the hardware onto it. So you're going to need your slider and your two swivels. Um, and I'll show you how to put the hardware on. So the first thing you're going to want to do is take your slider and you're going to put your strap through. Um, I like to put it from back of the slider to front. So the back is where you can kind of see where the centerpiece joins. Um, and then the front, it's nice and smooth. So back through, doesn't matter uh, which side you put it over first. Um, then you're going to fold it back over and um, on top of the middle part and through the other side. Okay, you want to give yourself about however much that is, an inch and a half or so. Um, and then we're going to take this over to the sewing machine and sew it together. So. Um, to secure this first, then we'll be putting the rest of the hardware on. So let me just adjust here. Okay, this is quite thick. Um, to be honest, I'm not sure how my machine is going to handle it. But when I did the sample one, it worked okay. So we're going to just cross our fingers that this one will too. Um, what we're going to be doing is sewing a box, um, kind of along the top stitching on each side and then across the top and the bottom getting um, as close to the slider as we can uh, but not too close um, when you sew through on the top stitching if your top stitching was not exact which mine rarely is it may not line up exactly on the other side and so for that reason um, I like to have it facing kind of the right way up this side is actually going to get covered up when we um, loop the strap back through the slider. So you, you won't actually see it on here, but you will see it on this side. So I like to have the side up and facing me. Um, you can put a zipper foot on your machine to help you get a little closer here. Um, I've started doing that uh, recently. I do it probably half the time. I'm just going to keep my regular foot on for now. Um, and show you what to do with that. This is a lot of layers. Um, so again, you may find that it can be a bit of a struggle. Um, just kind of same tips as before. Go slow. If you need a bigger needle, put a bigger needle in. Um, if you're really struggling, you can um, kind of take a piece of fabric, cover this, and then actually like hammer the leather a little bit flatter with a mallet or a hammer. Um, you can also kind of press it under something overnight, like a couple heavy books. That will help kind of compress all the layers together. But hopefully it won't be too bad. So, um, I'm going to put it in this way to start. So I've got the slider facing me. And I'm going to start on the side, um, on the right. Okay, so... I'm going to put my foot down. I am going to backstitch. Make sure you've got your um, needle lined up with your row of top stitching and just one or two back stitches. Okay, and then we're going to sew up the side. Okay, and I just kind of eyeball how close the foot is getting to the slider. Okay, so you can Put your needle down and pivot your strap. Um, I could maybe get one or two stitches closer. So I'm just going to use my hand wheel and move it 
just a little closer. Um, I can see my machine is trying to skip a stitch there. Sometimes you have to kind of hand wheel back and forth to get it to pick up the thread. Okay, so needle down and then I'm going to sew straight across. One thing to watch out for is, um, it's hard to see, let me see if I can move this. So you can see my slider is kind of right on the screw of my foot. Um, that can be problematic if it catches and it can be a little scary with the noise it might make. So I'm just going to try to be holding this out of the way as I sew. So I'm just going to hold, try to hold that over and then sew straight across nice and slow. Okay, and then once you get to the next line of top stitching, your needle goes down and we're going to pivot again. So now your strap is facing this way. Now I find my machine will struggle not so much with the bulk but with the height difference so you can see the your foot will kind of stick up on the back closer to where your slider is so i'm going to actually hand wheel a couple times just until it comes down over that kind of hill okay and then machine is catching it's not okay so this is actually good um, to show so my thread st started skipping stitches a few back so what I'm actually gonna do is pull it out so you can see it actually stopped stitching back here even though I was down there so I'm just gonna cut it here Take it off and try again. I'm just going to check and see the rest of my stitches look pretty good. So um, I'm going to put it back in on this side. You're going to want to back stitch um, up over where the thread kind of stopped catching just to make sure that what we've sewn so far will hold. So I'm going to try to line it up there. Okay, so I'm just going to slow my machine down, do a couple back stitches. Okay, and then keep going. Okay, so once you get close to the bottom, you put your foot down again and do our last pivot here, and then we're just going to sew straight across the bottom to meet up with where we started on this side. And then we're going to back stitch here as well. Okay. So then I'm going to pull it out, take a look. It looks like mine skipped a few stitches again. Okay, so I'll show you what I mean by that. So again, with the layers, mine didn't quite make it all the way across. So I'm going to start again from somewhere in the middle of this bottom line, line up my needle, back stitch, a couple stitches, and try again. Push my foot right down there with the scent with my finger. time it went. Okay, so this is a bit um, tricky just with the layers, but just go nice and slow. Don't panic. Um, if you get skip stitches like this, it's something we can just kind of go over and fix. Not a big deal. And I've got a loop here from somewhere, something that skipped. So I'm just going to trim that off. Okay, and then I'm just going to take a look. So this is what it looks like now. I'm not sure if you can really see this on the video, but here there's a couple stitches that are slightly longer than others, um, where my machine probably started to skip a little bit, but it's not terrible. Um, I may just go over that line again, just to give it a little bit of extra security. 
um, just because you will get some weight on your strap because that's what's holding your bag, of course. So I'm just going to go back over this fine line. that should hold now and again if you have your thread a color that matches your faux leather it will make it just look that much better okay so now I've got my box sewn on here so what we're gonna do now is you're gonna take the other end of your strap so make sure that it's um, not twisted Grab the other end, you're going to slide your swivel on, one swivel, okay, so just slide that on, leave it loose, pull it down. Once you have your swivel on, you're going to take this end and feed it back through your strap slider. So up through, down the other side. Okay, it's a little tight um, just because there's so many layers of the leather, but this will kind of work in the more you wear your bag and use it. Um, so you've got your slider on there now. Then you're going to take your other swivel. I've got my one swivel down here at the bottom. I'm going to take my other swivel, put my um, strap through it, and then fold this back on itself. And then it's just the same as what we did with our box here. We're going to sew our box here as well. Um, again, getting kind of as close as you can to um, this part of your swivel just to hold it nice and tight. Um, and then that's it, just this box. So um, once again, I am going to be um, having it kind of right side up, even though these swivels swivel course because that's what they're called um so your strap could twist and this could end up on the outside but it's more likely that you would have that part kind of up against your body so it would be less stitching will be less noticeable on the side so I want to be able to see what I'm doing from the top okay so um what am I doing here I'm going the wrong way that's what we're doing Right, so your swivel should be facing you or towards you and then it's exactly the same as what we just did so make sure your stitching is lined up back stitch okay. so and I'm just gonna keep my finger just here on the edge of my foot just to give it a little, a little extra pressure to help it get through all these layers you get close to the end, needle down, pivot, and then the same thing. So I'm just going to keep holding my foot down a little bit. Okay. Once you get to the other row of stitching, put your needle down again and pivot. Okay, and then we're going to be coming back down this side. Okay. Once you get down close to the bottom, we're going to do our last pivot. I'm just going to clip my um, threads here, at least on the top, just to make sure my thread doesn't get kind of sucked in and tangled up. And you can kind of see that my foot is like sticking up a little bit, so that's again why I'm just going to help hold it down to help keep the pressure and go across. Okay. There, that box went a little bit smoother. I didn't have to redo anything, or at least not from what I can see from this far away. Okay, so you now have a box here on this end. Uh, that looks pretty good to me. My stitches are fairly even, so I'm going to leave that. You could sew an X here as well, like we did on the handles for extra security. Um, I typically don't on the straps for whatever reason. I don't find that, I haven't really found that they've needed it yet. 
Um, if you get into making more bags, you can also use rivets on this side. Um, you can't uh, so much on the other swivel, so it's only on the kind of the one swivel clip because this one needs to move. As you adjust your strap, it will get pulled through here, but on this one, you could add kind of one or two rivets here to hold your strap instead of sewing. Um, or in addition to sewing, I'll often do the box, but then add kind of a rivet right here in the middle just to um, give it some extra reinforcement, dress it up a little bit. Um, but that's kind of it for the strap. So our last thing we're gonna do is attach it to our bag. So I'm gonna make mine a little bit longer because I like a nice crossbody strap, but if you have it shorter, um, it's a good shoulder, kind of shoulder bag length. I'm just going to kind of pull this through. Um, I find for my own kind of height and preference, I let, tend to like it quite long. Okay, so now I've got it adjusted here through the slider, so it's a nice long crossbody strap. The last thing we're going to do is just attach it to our bag. So your swivel clips will just clip here on your D-rings. So one on one side, one on the other side, and then, ta-da, we have a bag. It's all done. That's it. Congratulations. We did it. I hope you enjoyed bag making. Um, I hope I've maybe converted at least one or two of you to this wonderful hobby. And um, uh, if you want to see another sew along with a different bag or a wallet, let me know and I will talk to Kim and Kayla and see what we can come up with. But I hope you had fun. I've had so much fun watching your bags and um, seeing you kind of enjoy the process and jump in and take it on. So I hope that you uh, had a great time and enjoy your beautiful new bag.